We're hanging out with the general manager for the Las Vegas Raiders, Tom Telesco. And Tom, we were kind of talking about it just now off camera, but what have the past, call it 48 hours, been like for you and the family? Uh, it's exciting. Um, it just feels refreshing to be here. Um, you know, walking around with my family just through this building and, and the way, you know, the way that people treat people here, it's just amazing. I mean, it's just some great people here, um, tremendous facilities and, I just have a lot of learning to do, like learn all of all of you guys' names and I, we got players and coaches and I got a lot to do here, but um, can't wait to get started. And talk about all the things you're going to have to learn. But one thing that was pretty clear that you don't have to learn is the importance of history in this place, right? We, yeah. we talk about, you know, there's 31 teams and then there's the Raiders yep. and we have such a rich history and it's something we're incredibly proud of. Um, you talked about in the press conference, tangibly being able to see it, the legends on the wall, yep. things like that. I mean, what about kind of the history of this place really attracted you to this position? You know, growing up as a kid, as a big NFL fan, um, but growing up in Buffalo, but a Bills fan, but um, the Raiders were just different. You know, they just stood out from everybody else. That's the way it was when I was a kid, and that's the way it's really been even before I was born, even in the 60s, how, how they used to stand out with how they do business. And uh, I started with Al Davis, and there's just so much tradition here, so many great, you know, from Al Davis to the coaches to the players that have been here, um, to be a part of that tradition. You know, it's a little overwhelming. Like I said, it's a big response. This job's a big responsibility. Like it's talking about a global fan base. Um, Raider Nation is strong. You know, I've been in, I've been on the other side of that. You know, coming out of a tunnel. You know, whether it's here or in Oakland. I mean, it's tough. It's a, t it's a tough environment to play in. So not to be on that side of that, it's just it's really really rewarding. But um, yeah, there's just so much to offer here, both you know tangibly, like this building and the facilities and the people and the fit for me. I thought was perfect, and I think the team can win. That's the biggest thing is, is this is, I don't see this as a situation where we have to tear this down and go baseball style where it's gonna take a couple of years to build it back up again. I don't see that. We're gonna have to add some things, no doubt. We gotta get better, but um, you know, I think we can compete right away. You know, you talked in the press conference about that that first kind of meeting with Antonio and the interview the process that you, you went through and, and obviously he's you know part of that. But yeah. what was that first meeting with Antonio like? I mean, we see him in the press conference, we see him in the building, high energy, going 100 million miles an hour 24 seven. But what I'm curious, when you come in in, uh, you know, essentially, you know, coming to interview and, and learn right. more about him and more about this place. What were your takeaways from that meeting? Well, no different from what you see on the outside. Yeah. It's the same guy, which is great. Come on, man. Appreciate you. Do what you do, yeah. man. Have fun, man. Come on. Have fun. We can be difference makers in a lot of ways, right? A lot of ways. A lot of ways. A lot of ways. Um, high energy, genuine, um, loves football, um, loves working with people. And um, if there's certain leaders, like when they walk in their room, you can feel them in there, you can feel the presence, and that's what he has. He walks the room where you can feel the presence right away. Now, as far as being a head coach this league, you gotta lead, communicate, and motivate first. So you gotta do those first three things. And then you have all the X's and O's part of it. But um, you know, to lead 53 men into a game, you gotta have some special qualities. And you can see that even in, in, a, in, a, in a meeting room. So were you able to get a feel for how much this opportunity meant for him? And he talks about during the press conference, he goes, you know, I'm a kid from inner city, Los Angeles, and this is the team that I grew up watching and rooting for, and now I'm the head coach. Were you able to kind of get a gauge for, on a personal level, how much that meant for Antonio? You know, I think more after the fact, because I kind of forgot, you know, since the season ended till now, he'd been kind of, you know, waiting to see what was going to happen. So I know what a special day this is for him and his family to, you know, be a head coach, not only in the National Football League, but for the Las Vegas Raiders. I mean, it's just incredible. So. Um, just a great day for him, a great day to celebrate, and that's all back to work. Yeah, 100%. Um, but no, really, really happy for him. You know, you, you talked about during the press conference earlier about, you know, I have an understanding of the Raiders as an opponent, but it's a, a lot different now that I'm, I'm here and they're my team. Like, what what are those differences like for a casual fan? Like, somebody's like, okay, I know Tom knows them because he scouted them twice a year and played them yeah. twice a year for a decade, but what is that big difference in terms of that I'll tell you the one big difference, you know, I'm used to walking out and to play the Raiders you know, yeah, fans yelling and screaming at you. And then I walk in this building, everyone's got a smile on their face and it's the <laughs> nicest place in the world. I'm like, my perception of what this place is, you know, cause it's a, it's, it's a tough place to play when you're an opponent. So, um, but there's just some great people in this building and that's where it starts. So like, we talked about a partnership with myself and Antonio, but it's a lot more than that. There are so many more other people involved, scouting staffs, coaching staffs, and all the way down um, to the support staffs. Um, and then what everybody does here. So, um, yeah, it's exciting. It's, it's like I said, I have a lot to learn here as far as how everything works and how everything is put together, but I'm getting there. 
You know, one thing that I think the fans were really excited about was your history in the draft, it's particularly with those first rounders, turning them into pro bowlers, obviously with the help of a coaching staff and growing them and maturing them. But when you kind of look back at, at the, the history, especially of those first rounders, of guys that have been able to play at a high level, play at a pro bowl level, do any of them have kind of a, a common characteristic, a common trait that, that they all share? Uh, you know, it's usually, it's usually intangible as far as work ethic, preparation, a drive to be great. Those are the things that we're looking for really in every position, in every round, not just the first round. Um, but, we, you know, as far as the draft is concerned, we try and take a, you know, a probability based mindset, which is we're just, we know like, you know, every player we pick or sign, not every single one of them is gonna pan out exactly what we thought. It's just not, that's not normal. Like it's humans evaluating humans. So there's gonna be some error involved. But a lot of that common quality is really the, the makeup of the player. Because in the NFL, everybody's good. Like everybody on our team was the best player on their high school team. Many were the best player on their college team. Um, so the talent level is so good. You know, what separates you? A lot of times it's preparation, work ethic, and you know, drive to be great. Um, so that, that's you try and find those qualities in every player. You know, you mentioned a little bit about just kind of the understanding of this fan base and it's a unique fan base, a very proud fan base, a very vocal fan base. Uh, when you kind of think back to, you know, obviously being with the San Diego Chargers and the Los Angeles Chargers, like what are your kind of your memories of interacting with this uh, with this group of folks who like to call the Raider Nation? That they're everywhere, everywhere. You know, it doesn't matter if it's San Diego or Los Angeles, it could be Buffalo, Philadelphia, Chicago, it doesn't matter. They're, they're everywhere. and. Even, even where I'm coming from in, in Orange County, where I had friends there that were Charger fans. And then now that I came to interview here, it's like, hey, just so you know, I was really a Raiders fan, but I was a Chargers <laughs> fan because of you. But now, but I was really a Raiders fan. So now, so, I mean, they're everywhere. And it's just a global fan base. And then also, and also just like Las Vegas in general, like this is a rabid fan base. Like I've seen what the hockey team has done. Um, so this is really a great opportunity, not just because the Raiders are, Raiders are global, but also to locally to get this place going. And that comes with winning. You know, before we let you go, Tom, you know, we sit here in, in late January and we're kind of, you know, now approaching the off season, right? And really kicking the same thing into gear. But in terms of the next week, two weeks, 30 days for you, Antonio and Antonio, what's on that to do list? How do we what, what's number one item that we're attacking right now? Yeah, number one is the coaching staff. Uh, that, that's the biggest thing. We have to get that set so we know exactly the direction we're going to go in on both sides of the ball. So once that gets set, then we'll start getting more into player evaluation. And you know, part of being a GM is time management and juggling a lot of balls at one time. So I'll be doing a lot of, a lot of things like on parallel tracks and watching more tape and film of, of the current team here. Um, but this time of year is making a lot of lists and kind of checking them off because there's a lot of departments I still have to get to know. You know, the training staff, the, the, the doctors that work with the players, you know, equipment, video, like all that to do, that kind of do that concurrently, but there's a lot going on this time of year. Yeah, no doubt. And, and lastly, what do you think is, is kind of the, the biggest takeaway you take away from that first GM experience? You know, it's, it's amazing this game, like you learn every day, you learn something new. And I know for me, you know, working for 11 years as a general manager, um, there's things I did really well and there's some things I didn't do as well. And uh, you learn from both of those. Um, and I was lucky, my, my, even before as a GM, I worked for Bill Pulling with the Colts, who's in the Hall of Fame, and I just learned a ton just being there every day and just seeing, you know, how he made decisions. And then I went to the Chargers and, you know, tried, you know, follow all those same principles, all those same philosophies. But I'm excited to take all those experiences I had with one team and then bring them all here. Well, Tom, best of luck. I know everyone in this building is really excited. I know the fan base is, is ready to go with you and AP at the helm of the ship now. So best of luck, and we'll talk to you soon. Yeah, I appreciate right? it. Thank you.